Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on the Fourier transform of a boxcar function. Now, the Fourier transform, we are in the earlier video segment, we have went through the definition of a Fourier transform, but that, um, in order to learn how to uh, use Fourier transforms uh, confidently, we need to know at least how to uh, evaluate the Fourier transform of a few simple functions. Now, in the, in the tutorial, we would have uh, tried to evaluate the Fourier transform of a Gaussian function. Uh, but here, let me talk about the and a simpler example still. So, the Fourier transform of a boxcar function. Now, what, is, what on earth is a boxcar function? It is a function which is very simple. It has a graph that looks like this. It is 0 everywhere and 1 between minus t over 2 and t over 2. So piece, it is defined piecewise, and uh, the piecewise definition of the function is given here and sketch over here. Okay, so now uh, let us evaluate its Fourier transform. So the, to write down its Fourier transform, we will write say p twiddle uh, t of omega, uh, which is 1 over square root 2 pi, and integral from minus infinity to infinity p capital T of t, the boxcar function with with capital T, and then e i omega t d t. Okay, so this is nothing. We're doing nothing here. We're just merely writing down the definition. So this is merely writing down the definition of the Fourier transform. Uh, in the next step, we will need to make use of the uh, definition of the function p t of t, uh, the note that, okay, it is actually 1 within this time interval and 0 otherwise. So our integral, we don't need to actually evaluate from minus infinity to infinity. All we need to do is to integrate from minus t over 2 to t over 2 of 1 times e i omega t dt. Now this integral, of course, we can evaluate very uh, easily. This is 1 over square root 2 pi. Okay, e i or uh, omega t e, e i omega t when we integrate it we get e i omega t divided by i omega and then we need to evaluate it at t and t minus t over two. So if we do that, then we will get one over square root two pi. Okay, let's bring the i omega out. So one over i omega, and then uh, what we we're left in here will be if we substitute in the upper limit, if we substitute in the upper limit into t here, what we will get is uh, e i omega t over 2 and then minus e, okay, then we substitute t minus t over 2 into capital T, into little t, and we get minus i omega t over 2, okay? So we make then, we make use of the fact that this this thing here is equals to 2i sine omega t over 2 uh, and then the of course the i and the i will cancel here and the 2 the square root 2 and this 2 will cancel and leave behind square root 2 so the final answer is actually equals to uh, square root 2 over pi uh, 1 over omega and then we have sine omega t over 2. Now we can simplify this uh, function a little bit more uh, to write this as uh, if we uh, do not, if we, if we write this as square root 2 over pi uh, and then, uh, okay, so let's see, what do we need to write? We need to write omega, uh, not omega t, Let's get me the eraser, not omega t, but, okay, but 2 over omega t, I will have to multiply by t over 2, and then here I have sine omega t over 2, which is equals to, uh, which is equals to the square t divided by square root 2 pi times the sinc function omega t over 2 where sinc uh, of uh, x 
is equal to sine x divided by x. So this is the uh, Fourier transform of the box car function. And if we sketch it out, if we sketch this out, it will look something like this. Um, so let me uh, go on to the next empty page and sketch the uh, function sync. Okay, so this is a function of uh, frequency. And that here is okay, p twiddle t omega. And we'll find that it looks like this. So it has a peak at zero frequency. Then it goes down, crosses zero, comes back up, crosses zero, comes back up, and so on and so forth. So crosses zero, comes back up crosses zero, comes back up, uh, and it is uh, maximum at zero. It is, uh, oh, it is zero at actually omega tau. So let, let, let me, uh, instead of writing omega, let's write this in terms of omega t over two. And then the zeros will, the zeros will be at, uh, here it must be at, um, it must be at pi. And then here, this is two pi and then 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on and so forth. And here, of course, it's minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, and so on and so forth. So this is the sync function. The sync function, uh, omega t over 2, which is equals to sine omega t over 2 divided by omega t over 2.